tātou ngā whānaunga mihi nui ki a koutou. Um, nau mai haru mai ki tēnei tā mātou uh, rohe a tāhua tauranga moana. Um, ko wai tēnei kei te tū ki mua i a koutou, uh, ko manga taua tōku maunga, ko ranga taua tōku tāhuna, ko tama pahore tōku tūpuna, ko manga taua tōku marae, uh, rawa ko tahu whakatiki, ko Victoria ki ngia hau. Uh, he uri a hau a nga pōti ki a tama pahore, ki e tahi he iwi, ki e tahi atu he hapu, e ngari he uri a hau uh, a tama pahore, tēnā te, te mea nui. Um, it's awesome to see you all. I can see old friends um, and familiar faces, and it's just wonderful that we're here anō finally to come together and progress on the mahi that is we have been working on for all of us a long, long time now across our conferences. Um, and new faces. It's awesome to welcome those who haven't been to in our conferences before and our international speakers. Ngā mihi nui kia koutou. Um, I want to acknowledge the speakers that have um, just spoke, uh, presented. Um, I have to acknowledge Ngā Tikahu um, for making the tono on behalf of Tauranga Moana to bring the conference here. And the leadership that you saw on the podium today is exactly the leadership that has uh, brought this conference here. So I want to acknowledge that. And also our whanau at Pirihima um, and Ngā Pōtiki. And it's been a privilege to work on both of those projects um, with our whanau. So um, I've kind of cobbled this together because it's been pretty busy times and I wanted to take you through what, um, in a broader context, what housing might look like from an iwi or treaty settlement tribe perspective. And what we've tried to portray today for you with the lineup of speakers is a diverse range of approaches from small papakainga to mid of, say, six houses to mid-range of, say, 12 to 20. And then where do we go from there? We really want to get scale happening um, and we want the numbers because we our need is urgent uh, and we need everybody contributing. And so we wanted to kind of portray that in the local stories today. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, what could a treaty settlement housing development, sorry, treaty settlement tribe housing development look like? So we're going to use Ngā Pōtiki as the, uh, as the example. Um, oh, that's me. Okay. Secretary? No. <laughs> okay. So um, Ngā Pōtiki Atama Pahore Trust. So we have... We signed our deed of settlement in 2013 alongside uh, Ngai Tirangi, and we have a uh, we negotiated jointly, and we have separate settlements. So Ngai Tirangi have their settlement, and Ngā Pōtiki has we have our settlement. Um, it certainly was a long journey. I want to acknowledge the trustees who are current today up there, but also acknowledge those trustees who um, preceded and worked on the foundational work to get us to this point, and that's Poi Haere Walker and Waka Taiti, if he's still here, I saw him earlier. So where are we? Well, Ngā Pōtiki generally, uh, actually you're sitting in the heart of the rohe of Ngā Pōtiki. Um, the map's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so all through Papa Moa, um, the tribal estate is a bit broader than that. It's a bit broader than that, but the key thing is, some key points I want to share with you, thank you, is that importantly over one, well, over one third of our tribal estate was alienated through crown purchases. So repatriation of that whenua and reconnecting our whānau to the whenua has become quite a fundamental driving force that encourages us to do what we do. And we see housing as a way to achieve that reconnection and repatriation. Um, also, we're in a unique situation where our whenua isn't as rural as most whenua. So we are right in the middle of um, development pressures on both sides. If you look, you've got Mount Maunganui on at that end, and you've got all the growth coming through exactly where our whenua is. Um, so given the zoning that our whenua sits in, while we do have access to a lot of Māori land, 
we also have um, residential zoning rules that we have to comply with, or that, if that works, works for us, or change those rules if that's what we want to do. So these contextual factors influence a strategy around housing. Sorry. The settlement we received is tiny. So it's just a modest little settlement. The cash quantum is not much. But the ability to purchase back lands that we negotiated from the Crown, um, the value is really in the whenua. And that's what we want. We want our whenua back. So, um, so we negotiated very hard for the return of a particular piece of land called Te Hoho, and that's what we're going to be talking about further on in this presentation, which is 50 acres of beautiful prime land in the heart of Papamoa. And um, so that has become the focus of our treaty settlement housing development. Just want to take you through the strategy. I'm trying to share with you sort of the how did we get there. This strategy we started to formulate in 2013, but to be honest, the vision really, uh, really commenced when we started going down this route of negotiations with the Crown and started to look at what we wanted to do as a, as a people um, with the, the whenua in our rohe that we were trying to get back. So we would have started negotiations, I think, in around 2010, um, and that's when this corridor around housing started up. Um, and then fast forward to 2013, we sign a deed of settlement and we start to formulate written strategies and we come up with a housing strategy. So our vision at that time in 2013, I don't think it's changed too much from that, better lives through better homes and communities and that our Ngā Pōtiki members have access to suitable quality, affordable homes by 2033. It's an ambitious plan but what are we here for, eh? If we make it too easy for ourselves, um, then that's just too easy. Okay. And then, of course, some of those other strategic goals, and this is 2013, the language has changed since then, that Ngā Pōtiki become a social housing provider. Well, we've ticked that box, so we now have community housing um, provider status, which is really important because it means we can access the subsidies that are available through the Ministry of Social, Social Development. Um, and then we also wanted to go through a process of assessment, assistance and access as goals to assist our whānau, our, our members, into housing. And then also link housing and employment and housing and all of the other initiatives that we see as positive benefits that come from housing. Employment, work experience, education, a sense of place, uh, self-esteem, mental well-being, generally our, our well-being generally, and, and the quality of life that we get to enjoy, link back to housing. So we start to see that housing becomes like a linchpin or a, a cornerstone that other strategies can come off from. And I, you know, I'm probably preaching to the converted, you already know that. Um, so, okay, housing assessment, really important for us to understand what a, where, our, where our people are at and what are the priorities, what are the needs? So we did a survey in 2007 that told us that kaumatua are a priority and then large whānau um, and housing our, our large whānau, often intergenerational. So you've got nanny and papa, um, their kids and the mokopuna. Um, and we see this, I, I would, um, would not be surprised if this is the case for every Māori community that does do the surveys. Um, and, and carries them out because um, we are finding that here in Tauranga Moana the same has, ha, is occurring in our community. So, for example, Ngāti Kahu saw the priority as six kaumātua homes and six uh, whānau homes, four bedroom, two bathroom, large homes. Um, and so we're seeing that repeated. I think this is really interesting. Um, at the time, in 2007, 40% of our members owned their own homes which is a really good statistic, really. I mean, comparatively, it's been declining since, and I, th I think nationally, Māori uh, uh, have declined to about 30% in terms of home ownership. But what they told us at that time is that we need to formulate a strategy to ensure they retain their homes, because that's a good number of our membership that already have homes. 
and knowing that led us into a strategy around repair and maintenance and insulation. Um, and then 50% are renting, and we know that, um, you know, as, as Auntie said, rents are skyrocketing. Um, and so that leads us into a strategy around rental homes, and we, often, we are finding that we are building papakainga um, on the basis of presenting them to members as rentals. Um, and with the current funding regime, we're able to do that previously with the social housing unit and now um, with the Māori Housing Network. Um, so there's, there's opportunity there for us to lever off, and I encourage you to go to the TPK store, uh, stand there, and all of our stores in here, and talk to, talk to everyone because they're working collaboratively, and I think that's what we're going to find as we, over the course of the next few days, is that theme really start to resonate through the conference. Um, I'm going to flick through some of this because you've rung the bell on me. But um, housing assistance, yeah, look, let's, let's assist our, our people, eh? Let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's not do what agencies do. We can navigate our people to the right places. Where we really should be as iwi and as treaty settlement tribes is right alongside agencies. So we're collaboratively working and coming up with ways to address this massive problem of housing. So let's work together is basically what that's about. Um, Access, okay, come up with strategies to access, to, to, to ensure that we have housing available for our people. Well, in a nutshell, our strategy is, has three po to it. Um, it was obvious to look at Māori land for development because as Matua Kuhiraki said this morning, there's 44,000 acres of it, so let's use that. Papakainga housing is really suitable for that. Um, we have existing houses, let's utilise the repair and maintenance assistance that funders have available for us, utilise that. Um, and also insulation um, incentives, uh, and retain the houses that we do have, because we've been told our whānau don't particularly want to move, they're already in established communities, they love living there, their cousin is next door and across the road, and they've had this house for 50 years, so why should they move? And that's really about just making sure that their houses are still suitable in another 50 years. Um, and then the final um, strategy is around treaty settlement land. I'm going to have to quickly go through this. So the land we're talking about is Te Hoho. It's 50 acres. Um, it was a, a swamp pa back in the day, back in the 1800s. Um, and I'm not doing it justice by describing it this way. It is a very important piece of land to us culturally in terms of our history, and we fought very hard to get it back. Um, the irony is, is that we're now developing it and selling some of it. And I want to address that up front because um, when we tackled this, this issue around fighting for your whenua to get it back and then alienating it, what's the, how can we substantiate that? And essentially we are rationalise it like this. We will retain over 60% of this development and the profit that we gain from the sites that we do sell, we commit to reinvesting back into more land development and purchase. And so because we have such a small settlement, we have to look for commercial answers for ourselves and grow those. So I just want to explain what we've got in front of us. It's just lines and colours to you, but it represents about six months of really hard, intensive work with a project control team. And prior to that, two years of lots of negotiating and getting to a point of agreeing that this is what we're going to do with this whenua. The orange sites are for the public. The yellow sites are for Ngā Pōtiki. And we have concentrated some of them right up the top in the north there because we decided that our people will have access to the best sites, and those are the best sites. So we don't want to push our people into the little stinky sites. We want to be in the awesome sites and have all of that beautiful outlook over the the green belt, et cetera. So um, then we've got retail where the red portion is. And then at the top is a sort of salmon pink couple of blocks. That's set aside for Kaumatua, so uh, like a Kaumatua village with about 20 units in there. In total, we're looking at about 240 sites, and 30% of that is for Ngā Pōtiki. And then if they don't take it all up, you fellas are welcome to sign up at the office too. So. Māori first, that's for sure. Um, right. The vision. You've got to start with the vision. 
um, and we moulded this around for some time. This is where we came to. This whakatauaki really encaptures our vision. Hūtia te rito te harakeke, kei hia te komako e koi. Ki mai ki a hau, hea ha te mea nui, mā kue ki atu, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. So, three key things that come out of that that really resonate with us as Ngā Pōtiki. Um, harakeke, which grew through the Papamoa area, was a massive resource. We fought Tauroa over it all the time because, of course, you know, the traders wanted the muka to make the rope, so it was a real in-demand commodity. So it has a resonance back to the history of this block. And then, of course, we have the heart, te rito, the heart. If you take the heart out, where am I, where's my bird going to sing? Where am I going to stand? So this is about the repatriation. It is about bringing the heart back into Papamoa and pumping some really good cultural Ngā Pōtiki blood through it. Um, and we make no apologies for that. Our people need places too, and this is where we want to make a start for that. And then, of course, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. So it is about people, and I'd like to think that it's about people and land as well, so we look after our whenua as we go through it. Branding starts. This, I have to say, this is the first time we've publicly shown the brand for Manawa. So this is part of that journey is telling the story, and we've called our our development Manawa, which is heart, and the byline is the heart of Papa Moa. So this is, we're starting to look at branding and marketing now, and this is all part of the journey of, that we're on to do this development and start it in 2017. And I just acknowledge platform um, marketing for assisting us with this branding development. Um, the values, every project should have values that underpin it, that guide it, that keep it anchored, and so those are the values for us. Tanga tira tanga, let's take leadership. Um, let's be leaders and let's be professional. Let's take our people with us. Let's look after our people, manaki tanga, and let's look after our whenua, kaitiaki tanga. Team approach, collaboration, strategic relationships. That's why we're here. Let's do it over the course of the next three days. And please come and talk to the ones in the stores. They've all been doing it as well. Really good examples. Um, again, I've gone through that. Plan for the whole block, that's what we've done. So the southern section is the bottom part on this side. We will start there first in 2017. Um, and then in the northern section, that's set aside for a retirement, retirement village on long-term lease. So we retain the whenua there. So we have built in special housing um, options for our Ngāpō tiki people. Rentals, license to occupy, house and land packages. All, each of those options will be well thought out so, and well supported so that we have bespoke funding and finance for each of those options. Um, so, that we, so that we come up with a plan and each option that our whanau can be stepped through and supported to right to the end to build their house. We're right in the middle of negotiating concrete floors using kāinga whenua loans, and we're negotiating that with Housing New Zealand right now. So we hope to utilise that through the project. So last final slides. Um, these are the next steps for us. We're in a big process, and we hope to be breaking ground in 2017, and we hope to be selling our first sections mid-2017. And I'll have to come back to the next conference and tell you how that went, because we're you know, warts and all, you'll hear the story. But um, look, thank you for your time. I'm sorry I've taken up more than I should. Thank you very much.